whole sect of wild divinities came out in 2020 in a pretty interesting times. So, first of all, how was the pandemic time for incantation and uh, you as an artist? Um, yeah, I mean, well, definitely the pandemic was strange times for sure, but for me, they were okay. I mean, it actually gave me time to kind of reset on a lot of stuff. I mean, um, I've been going on tour and just doing, going full speed for a while. So it was nice to have some time to chill out. I mean, it's a sucky reason to, but, you know, with all the situations, you just got to make the best of, you know, what you're handed and stuff. I know for a lot of other people, it was either tragic or um, just, you know, difficult to deal with. But, you know, like my, um, you know, home life and family life is great. So that help makes it awesome. And then just the fact of, you know, being able to spend time, um, you know, doing, I don't know, doing other things and also recording at the same time. It just gave, gave me a lot of extra free time. And, um, you know, that was great. I mean, we utilized it um, with getting, you know, this album and Holy Deification um, organized, plus, you know, a bunch of other um, material we were able to work on, too, during this time. When did it all start for Unholy Deification, and how did you write this music and record it? It was, well, it started to get written, like, before we even finished the mix of, um, you know, Sect of All Divinities, because Sect of All Divinities was a real difficult album to get through. It was just, um, yeah, it was, by the time it was done, I didn't know which way it was up as far as, like, you know, the songs or how it was or whatever, but I just felt inspired you know, quickly just to start writing some like a little more aggressive stuff than I thought was on the sect. I, every album was kind of an answer to the album before it. And I just, after finishing sect, I just thought it was a little bit not as aggressive of an album as I would have preferred. So I, I concentrated on that and started writing some of the more, um, you know, I guess, brutal and chaotic stuff was the first stuff I wrote. But then, you know, a certain point, everybody contributed with music and stuff. I don't know everybody's, um, you know, motivation, but for mine, it was just really trying to answer some stuff on the last one that I think, you know, where Sect fell short on. But that's every album. Every album, there's something that I, when I listen back to it, I realize something was missing or something fell short. And I want to, it gives me the inspiration to start working on you know, the next stuff that we do. If uh, sect was a difficult process, how would you describe the process with unholy deification? Um, well, the times made it difficult, but in the same, the same time, we worked around it pretty good. I mean, we did, um, you know, I mean, basically most of the music, I would say at least 80% of it was probably written for um before even sect came out probably around june or something like that and we were we had to get together anyway to do the sect the file divinity video so we just took some extra time and you know worked on some of the newer songs that we had um you know during the video footage time and um yeah basically just within like we just took our time from 2000 till about two end of 2002 to just get together like um you know every couple of months when we had some stuff we were just in inspired and we just kind of you know we started recording basic tracks and we most of the songs on this one we, we kind of demoed them once and then went back you know maybe a month later after kind of analyzing the demos and then recording the final tracks and all all the tracks were done like uh, more like a live in the studio thing it wasn't wasn't like any click tracks or anything like that we wanted to keep it very natural very um organic and pure because it just it works for us it just works better i mean it's nice um you know to have everything 
organized perfectly with the click for some bands but for us it, we kind of thrive off that you know live jamming band um you know connection and the whole vibe um you know when we're practicing and playing the songs and like psyched to play the songs that's when we want to get the um get the recording done not after we've played it you know so many times that we're kind of bored of it or something like that you know if you could like uh lift a couple of songs that are important for you or kind of the lead songs from the album and uh tell a bit of a back background stories well the first song we wrote was the invocation song i mean that's the first one i wrote i wrote that one that was a direct answer to the sect of all divinities uh, one i mean i wanted something that was just you know right out of the gate have that kind of rage to the the music and just have that urgency to um you know i don't know to exist and just to like kind of not let you know not be held back like i guess a little bit on sect towards the end of it i just wasn't happy with you know some of the some of the um the vibe of it i guess the vibe in general was what bothered me so i really started writing stuff that was had a, what i felt what i feel is more of an urgency to it like there's a um an aggression it's something that's pushing forward and i felt with the invocation it really has that um a kind of pushing forward vibe to it and i was actually with probably the so was it the second song we wrote for that one was a chalice was the one the next one that we, that i wrote which was also another uh really aggressive song and like i said both of those are in my opinion more brutal and aggressive than the stuff on sect so that was like kind of like my personal like i said uh, i don't know rebellion or whatever you want to say about the the sect album um another another song that's real um special on the album is the last song circles i mean it's total you know doom exaggerated um doom kind of vibe to through the whole song um but that was the one where you know i was able to get some guest vocals from jeff bizarro which was you know super awesome being how much of a influence and a legend he is to be able to play on the album was great and then have henry veggie and who was um basically the guy that helped get me into like the real deep underground back in the um mid 80s and stuff so it's great to have him and also i played in revenant with him and then we also had dan vladivon on there which has been our touring bass player when chuck can't do stuff so it's just you know really cool to have a uh, connection with a bunch of our friends on the album and um yeah and i think also the you know exaggerated doom vibe fits the um the concept of the album real well with um ending kind of very dismal incantation has been going for over 30 years and still going strong but how do you see the future of the band at the moment um uh, well i mean th things in in general really haven't ever been going better i mean every the excitement over the band is like super high and um the vibe within the band everyone that's like a part of it um it all just feels really good like every time we're playing either at a rehearsal or live it just feels like that's the place where we're supposed to be playing with the people that we're supposed to be playing with so for me it's like uh, i really feel like just with the band and in life in general i'm just at like a peak point in my life where um I guess all the cards kind of aligned for me and all the hard work that I put into um, music and just getting through life and all that stuff has paid off in a very um, rewarding and just, um, you know, it's, it's really comforting, you know, to be able like, to be able to play with such great people and have um, fun vibe, hanging out with the same people and just uh, everything is just like, 
you know, I don't know, it, it sounds cheesy, but it's like a, fa- a big family of metalheads or something like that. And we're all kind of just, you know, focused on just uh, kicking ass as much as possible and having a good time doing it, you know. You mentioned the 80s. Well, uh, what are kind of the first memories that come up when you think about those times, both maybe late 80s when Incantation got its start and uh, 92 when Onward to Golgotha came out and so on? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we'll say, I mean, the band started in 89 and um, things really started to like, move forward with the death metal scene pretty impressively i mean um i I was well knowledge in a lot of um underground music at that time but like i remember in 1988 um you know i was i can't remember probably eight 17 or 18 years old and we ended up doing some shows with um well Immolation was a local band at that time in our area that we used to play with when I was in my former band Revenant. And, um, but we ended up uh, bringing up Morbid Angel to play our Northeast area uh, back then. And uh, we did, we well, we played two shows with them. Immolation played three shows with them. And, um, but I went to all three of them. And well, obviously the ones I played, but I went to the other one I didn't. And it was just a really impressive um, experience to see something that really, I, you know, wasn't seen live by that many people, that aggression that um, Warp Angel brought and that firepower and just that overall will to want to, like, conquer all with their music. And it was a very inspired, inspiring time. Also, um, their sound guy was uh, John D. Plachet, who played with uh, Necrovore was um, their sound guy. And he was also, a, I was a big fan of their demo. So to be around all those people, even f- just for, it was like probably a week or something like that. And I mean, we were in touch with them besides that, but like actually being around that energy and being around that, um, I don't know, Eye of the Tiger look really, um, really made an impression on me and was part of the, reason why I had the strength to kind of move on as a um, musician to want to follow my own dreams instead of, you know, instead of what we were doing in Revenue, which is, I was also really into, but at a certain point I felt like I needed to express um, something, uh, I don't know, I guess in a different way. Like I kind of like, at a certain point in 89, all the pieces kind of fell together in my brain. I knew what I wanted to do, but it was just a matter of if I was going to make a decision, if I was going to play music, you know, for money and, and try to be successful or play music for the passion of it. And the, my passion for metal was just way too strong where it just like, I, I was happy to just, you know, maybe have a super short career doing what I wanted to do and just, um, you know, it was okay if, if, if you know, people didn't like it or whatever, because we just want, I just wanted to do something that was really honest. So yeah, that time was really um, special and it was obviously extremely cool and, and awesome when people started to actually like what we were doing, but, but it was never like expected. And um, it was always appreciated because it was an honest thing, you know? And I mean, definitely playing death metal is not a, a good financial game plan anyway, but we didn't want to even do death metal in the, say, the traditional style that, um, you know, other bands were doing. We want to do it in a more raw, more, um, I don't know, I felt like it was more in the tradition of the underground and, you know, well, I mean, there was a lot, definitely a lot of possessed influence and stuff like that on there, but um, really just... Um, you know, want, we wanted to push the limits, you know, with the album kind of create our own niche, but just do it in an honest way that was just representing ourselves. And um, somehow, once we finally got to putting out Homer to Gogotha, it was really cool because we put on an album that was different than all the other death metal albums that were out there. And that was all just by us being honest with ourselves and just doing it for 
our own reasons and not not worrying about fitting in with the other stuff. And we always kind of looked at ourselves as kind of like uh, rebels or underground, even you know under, I mean, underground underdogs, even in our scene, because um, you know a lot of bands were doing this more um, thrash influence death metal back then, or just stuff that was like it's still based on some of the rules of thrash and our rules were more in the hardcore punk vibe mixed with like the really rough, um, you know, really like all those rough early demos, like the Necrovore, Necrophasia, um, I don't know, Master, Morbid Angel, Death, um, whatever, you know, any of that stuff back then, there was a raw edge to it that made that, that I was attracted to. And a lot of the stuff that was coming out was very uh, pristine and well-produced. And it wasn't that it was bad, that that stuff, you know, it's, it's their stuff and it sounds good that way. But for us, we really wanted to capture more of a primal vibe. You know, we definitely got inspired when we started hearing some of the, um, the Swedish death metal stuff that was coming out in Scandinavia and like abhorrence and um, say entombed um, nihilist um, unleashed where there was a little bit of a rougher edge to the production. So we definitely gravitated more towards say a, a European vibe, but uh, we it was still done. I think in a distinct way that was us. Well, how do you see the evolution of incantations music from those days to today when unholy dedication comes up? Um, eh, it's hard to say. I mean, a lot. I mean, a thing things always end up changing. I mean, things things are let's just say things are basically the same as far as overall concept and reason for doing stuff. And so that's important, but at the same time, you know, over time and working with different people, different people bring different things to the table. I mean, all the albums we did, regardless of how many people were in the band, was always a collaboration and a rep- represented the um, people that we're working with at the time because everybody has something unique they bring to the table. So, um, you know, doing it with so many different musicians over the years you know of course it's a bummer you know when you don't have you know you think when you start the band that you're gonna do stuff with these guys they're gonna be with you forever we're gonna conquer the world you know you have these pipe dreams of like how awesome it's gonna be but the reality of it is is you know people have different ideas and people have different Uh, levels of you know uh wanting to do this or whatever you know and so but at, the, at that same token working with so many people you know enriches you as a songwriter and helps you look at things in all different ways because different people obviously look at things differently and they do things differently but that also is an inspiration and so it's like i I feel like I get like the wealth of knowledge of a lot of the other musicians as you go on. And there's things you keep and things you don't keep. It's a natural thing of jamming with people. So it's like at this point, I really feel like super comfortable myself as far as like knowing that I could express myself the way um, I want want to. Maybe earlier on, we wanted to express ourselves with the music, but we were writing more Uh, clinical maybe and now we write more imagine imaginative i guess would be the word because you you know we're th- really thinking about it and trying to come across a certain way and, and before it was kind of like you come up we would just come up with riffs and kind of find out where the whole thing goes but now sometimes we'll have like a majority of the song i'll have it in my head and then i'll just try to put the pieces together it's almost like you start to th- um, think in music And then also the um, addition to having Luke Shively on guitar really helped uh, out a lot because his um, songwriting and lead writing really just fits in great with the way we do stuff because he writes his leads in a vein more like a riff. So it really works. It really works well. I'm really impressed. And it was really nice because when you work with somebody um you know a lead player on songs 
it sucks when you have to go back and be like, ah, yes, that doesn't really fit or whatever, you know, but with Luke, it's like really almost every, I think everything he contributed uh, lead wise was everybody was like extremely happy with it the first time around. And only time it was changed was because he wanted to change it. And when he did want to change it, he still came up with something great. So it's really nice to be in that zone where, you know, even, you know, the person that people will say the people you work with in general are understanding the vibe and working with the vibe to make the songs even more expressive and stuff. And besides that, just, just the overall talent of Luke was definitely a, a great thing. I mean, he's an extremely talented guitar player and a riff writer and stuff. So it was nice to have somebody who was so strong, um, you know, in all those aspects to be a part of it, but also be, um, you know, willing to, work as a team to do it because sometimes when people are very strong guitar wise on something they have such a strong vision that when it comes to doing a team effort thing they get kind of uncomfortable or feel like their idea gets watered down but he was really good at um you know giving stuff to the band and then letting the band kind of vibe into it and you know, listen to suggestions and stuff. I mean, all suggestions that any of us make are never a hundred percent correct. We all, we all benefit from having that kind of musical connection. Um, but yeah, it was awesome. I mean, it's just great. I mean, between Kyle, Luke and uh, Chuck, it was just an absolute pleasure to, um, you know, write this album and record the album. And we're, you know, I'm super happy with the way it came out. I mean, I'm happy with our last album, but this one I'm happy with more, we'll say, you know, like I, I was happy with it, but this one I knew early on, like there's something here that connects with me. That's very, um, that connects with me more than the sec down, even though the sec down did great for us and everything. And I don't like to sound like I'm bashing it. It's just that I look at the albums in a, personal and different way than um other people look at it. other people enjoy it for the music i enjoy it for the whole process of building it the, the time working with people and on the on holy deification album it was like an absolute pleasure and inspiring time in sect even though we, we came up with some great stuff it was like we knew that it was um an era was kind of over with you know, in the band and that we had to really, um, really focus on what, you know, what we are as a band and kind of reset a little bit, uh, you know, because it's easy to kind of sometimes veer off course, just, just a tad bit, even though it's very minor. It, for me, it was, uh, you know, the minor details are fucking important because I'm just, it's just the way I am. 